Hi, you guys. Um, it's Thursday evening, January 29th, 2015. My name is Doris, and this is the Knit and Pearl podcast, episode 35. I don't know what the name is yet. <laughs> In social, no, you can find the show notes for this podcast on knitandpearl-doris.blogspot.com. And there will be links and all that stuff in the show notes. Um, in social media, I am One Fine Cow on Ravelry and Twitter. I am One Fine Design on Etsy and Facebook. And I am Doris M. Smith on Instagram. I seem to post more on Instagram than anything. <laughs> this podcast has a Ravelry group, which is the Knit and Pearl podcast group. And it's been a quiet week, no new members. So, but we are getting posts in the um, January, February mid along. Let me tell you about that. We have a January, February mid along. The rules for the mid along is you must be a member of the group to qualify for prizes. You can knit, crochet, any adult sized mitten pattern. You can have two entries per person. It had to be started January 15th or after and will need to be finished by February 15th. Have fun. The prize is a $6 or less giftable pattern from Ravelry. Thanks for participation. We have a few entries already and I'm still working madly on mine. <laughs> okay. There's a story about those, and we'll get you that in the whips. So, the story of the week is that Saturday, no, Sunday, I plan on doing it Saturday, it didn't happen. Sunday afternoon, I made my way to Notorious, which is my local yarn store, which is about a 30 minute, 30 to 40 minute drive away. Anyway, it's a lovely place. I love it. I can't say anything bad about any experience that I've had in Notorious. So if you're in the St. Louis area, I recommend you going by and checking them out. They're awesome. Um, so I went there and spent my uh, gift certificate I got from Christmas from Ted. And I finished and I said, oh, I guess Christmas is over now since I don't, I, I've used up my last gift. So I'm just going to kind of go through my stashes. So I got, oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go out of frame for a minute. <laughs> Boy, I got to see some mess, messy room here. And my bigness. Oh gosh, this is crazy. Sorry. Yarn. Can I say yarn now? <laughs> so, I got some blocking wires. This says it's a sweater blocker from Fiber Fantasy, complete sweater blocking instructions included. So, I got it for the bars and I used it to block one of my finished objects. So it has bars, it's got little curved wires for the um, sweaters and, and it was very reasonably priced. So I got that, which I've been wanting for a while. Let's set that right there for now. And I also got a big bag of goodies. Oops. So, let's start with the needles and such. I got some wool, wool, wool wash. You, you can all, you can, whatever. I don't know how to, <gasps> oh, excuse me. I don't know how to say it, but. Got some wool wash. I got some chow goos. 
These are US 8, 5 millimeter, 32 inch circular fixed. There's that. And I got a set of 2.75 US 2 double point needles for my mitten. Obviously, they're the other ones are in the mitten. These are Knitter's Pride Carbons. Awesomes, awesomes, awesomes. Okay, so now shall we go into the yarn? And let me say, Tracy from uh, T Plays Nice podcast, I only went a little bit over my. <laughs> allotted certificate so I got three balls of this marble chunky and in the color is MC 10 um, I got three of them a sweater quantity for a sweater I'm going to be starting soonish Maybe after I'm a good ways finished with my mittens, but I love the color colors and I can't wait to start it. So I got three balls of that. So that takes up a big area of my, it's hundred percent acrylic. If you don't know what this yarn is, it is. Two hundred grams. Three hundred and forty one yards. Hundred percent acrylic. Any other information I think I put in the show notes? The lot number. There we go. I did that. Got some beautiful 100% mercerized cotton. Let me see if I can find the name. This is Plymouth Yarn Fantasy Natural 100% mercerized cotton. The color is 9951 and the lot is 437288. So pretty. I see more washcloths in my future. <laughs> I got some of this beautiful stuff. Classic Shades Frenzy Universal Yarn. Universal Yarns. Classic Shades Frenzy. The package says, knit, relax, smile, repeat. The color is called Thrill Ride. It's like a single. I figure I would, and it's 156 yards. And it is 70% acrylic, 30% wool. It's a bulky and was I got it with the intent of making another one of my cows that I designed to figure out a good pattern so I can write it up. So I think it'd be a beautiful, beautiful cow. And last but not least, let me make sure. Yes. I got two skeins of Cascade 220, one light brown, one dark brown. The shade colors are, this one is 8622, this one is 86886, and it's like a dark brown. This one is a light brown, and they are for, I didn't know which color I wanted, 
my bakery bear to be, so I just bought two. They were, you know, Cascade 220, reasonably priced, 100% wool. Peruvian. Two hundred and twenty yards. Yeah, one hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool. So excited about that bakery bears in my future. Maybe two. And that I had the most fun. That is my stash enhancement and story. And also, maybe the reason I didn't go so far over my allotted certificate was that I was a <laughs> frequent flyer to returner, and so I got 10% off my purchase. That was kind of nice. So anyway, we will move along to the FOs. The first thing I finished was the vanilla socks. They are finished. Not matchy, but there they are. There's the one. It's got the purple top, purple toe. This one's got a yellow top and a yellow toe. And mixed it is. So I did these, I did about less than an inch of two point two by two, and then I went to three by three by one, three by one, fish lips kiss heel, and then I carried the three by one rib over the top of the sock. Simple vanilla socks. So fish lips kiss heel. I knit it on 2.75 my carbons, your S2s. The is the is opal cotton sock yarn. The color is 1954. Done. Happy birthday, Melissa. <laughs> I also finished my Age of Brass and Steam which is a free pattern on Ravelry by Orange Flower Yarn. Uh, it was knit on um, US 8 5 millimeter Addy Turbos, 40 inch circulars. The yarn is Red Heart Boutique, Unforgettable, and the color is Dragonfly. And I used my blocking wires to block it, and it was fabulous, wonderful. Very easy to do. Turned out, I think it turned out very nice. Let me show you up close and personal. It's about, it is, it became a little bit, yeah, it's my wingspan. Uh, greens, purples, blues, gorgeousness. I did an extra, like, three or four garter rows at the bottom just because and so now I'm going to wear it excuse me while I dress myself and you know it's acrylic so obviously the little um, lace things didn't block out but Hard to, um, don't look at the camera, just do it. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> there we go. Feels nice against my skin, my neck. Okay, finally, the last finished object is my spinning. My Happy Fuzzy Yarn, or Happy Fuzzy Yarn Fiber that I got for Christmas from Melissa. It is four ounces of 100% Blue Face Luster. Um, the color is Sea Monster. 
if you can see that. I got 154 yards of monstriness. It was not even, it was a lot of thick and thin, and it was breaking during plying. Again, I don't blame the fiber, I blame the spinner. Spinner error. Um, it's so strange to me. And, you know, so maybe an experienced uh, spinner can tell me why it is that I seem to have the most success spinning a rustic fiber than I do when I get a very nicely prepared dyed fiber that is thick and thin and it's not even and I have breaks and so if somebody can leave comments and maybe tell me what I'm doing wrong if I'm not spinning it enough or what the deal is but it's nice I like it it's soft and yummy and squishy and I'm sure that I'll find something to do with it so that is all of my finished objects so we're moving on to the whips And my whips, my first one is my foraging mittens, which is a bot pattern by Molly of a homespun house. There are links in the in the show notes. Um, I knit it on. I'm knitting it on. I started knitting it on. So my high high is 2.75 so let me just show you the yarn is soft like kittens rhubarb uh, what is it called rhubarb stark starks stocks is the colorway Noodle sock is the name of the, the, okay. Noodle sock and it is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. like kittens it's from New Zealand um, the lady who has was dying this has a podcast called gentle ribbing and I think that she might die occasionally now with on an Etsy store but anyway let me tell you about this pattern <laughs> I one of my purchases was to go one of the reasons why I went was because I felt like this pattern has so many things in it that I was new to me that and the pattern was written for double point needles instructions and I was trying to figure out overthinking again how to do this magic loop and I got nervous and apprehensive about all the new stuff well especially the afterthought thumb and the, the making sure that I did the right um, increases at the thumb and so I said let me just go get a pair of carbons DPNs just so I can follow the pattern until I get comfortable so I've done that I, I've done a lot of this the shaping of the thumb and I put in my scrap yarn for the thumb hole and I am not enjoying double point needles on this I really am not 
I wish that I could. I mean, I have knit on double points before and I did okay. But since learning Magic Loop, it's really, really, really hard to knit with double point needles. So I'm about ready to switch back to my Magic Loop on this. But there is, I, I think I was like right about in here last week, right about in there. I've got quite a bit. Got the, there's the thumb. Ooh, we can't see it. It's rolled up. <clears throat> the afterthought thumb hole. And um, I don't know. I'm just not enjoying the knitting on the double points. So like I said, I'm getting ready to switch back to my carbons for Magic Loop. So... This is my mitten for the mitt along. And it, like I said, it's a bot pattern. And I have it in my knit spin farm bag. Joanne Springs knit spin farm dot Etsy dot com. And I might be getting another one in the mail this weekend. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Yes, I might be. So, that's the mitten. I ordered another. I ordered a small one from her shop last night. So, I can't resist. I love the, her style of bags. This is a medium. I ordered a small. So, finally, I'm making a waffle hat. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already saw the beginning of this. Out of some hand spun. The pattern is the waffle hat. It's a free pattern on Ravelry by Linda Suda. Suda, yeah. I'm using my hand spun from Yarn Geek Fibers. Is it is 100% BFL. The color is slice of lemon wrapped around a golden brick. My spinning on this one is like really thick and thin. More thick than thin, but I absolutely love the way the knit, the colors are coming out. I love it. Thank you, Sarah from Yarn Geek Fibers. I'm glad I found you. I actually bought this fiber at um, Knit and Caboodle in, down in Old St. Charles. And um, the really funny thing about it, small world, um, is that Sarah is from, Sarah from um, Yarn Geek Fibers is from that St. Charles area. So she had some of her stuff in that shop. And I actually got it for like 40%, 30% off. But it's lovely. I mean, reds and yellows. And oh, it's just beautiful. I love the way it's knitting up. And too bad about my hair. I'm putting it on. I'm almost done, but here's the bad thing. Oh, all these lovely strings. And it's just, just, just. Uh... <laughs> the bad thing is, this is how much yarn I have left. <laughs> so I want to make it slouchy because it might also be a birthday gift. So. I figure this won't go bad, too bad if I put this here to finish it off. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm almost done, but I wanna make it more slouchy. This is a lovely, awesome pattern. With some lovely fiber. So, Love it, love it, love it.
So that is all of my whips. There is no spinning. I haven't put anything else on the wheel this week yet. And I was like, talking about spinning, I was thinking, ugh, I'm going to just, I've got some more Joanne Springs, um, Clown Forest roving. I just might put it on since it does so well for me. And, and I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to practice and do another skein of not so rustic and just try to, you know, do it because I've been switching back and forth and, you know, the more rustic is, I don't know. I just have an, I have a better time and more even spinning when I use it. But like I said, maybe I need to just do another of the more prepared dyed fiber and try to figure it out. So my needle adjacents so i as soon as i get a good go get my mittens a little further along i want to start a sweater this one is my needle adjoint adjacent it is called a comfy raglan sweater which is a free pattern on ravelry been in my library for a while and I really want to knit a sweater so that is a needle adjacent I also have been craving to knit another another Ricky hat yes I do so That's it of the regular stuff. We're going to go into Pinterest and stumble. The Pinterest, I found the coolest thing. If I open it, it won't. Okay, so. It is called patternsforyou.com and you can t it, th this company takes any photo that you upload to them and they will make a stitch cross pattern, a beadwork pattern. They will make a pattern for you. And if you go into the pattern maker It tell you know you can upload your file right here on the other side upload your file and then pick out what stitch you want to do if you're going to do a loom or the different stitches you pick which one you want and they will make you a pattern that you can cross stitch or you know bead or loom or whatever I thought that was so cool. And I know that there are a, a several um, stitchers, um, cross stitchers, uh, uh, podcasters that I watch, Patty especially from Patty Knits and Spins. She's making a beautiful cross stitch that she's almost completed with. But I thought that was so cool. So, before I leave Pinterest, I want to tell you that I am going to start a thread this evening in Ravelry, and I want you to tell me your favorite pins. Share with everybody your favorite pins. You can either put a link in to the, the pin, or you can just write the pin so other people can look it up. And... Next week, it'll be open for one week, and next week I will do a random number generator and there will be a prize. 
Because I, I show you the things that I look at every week on my pen, on my Pinterest. And I want you guys to show me yours. And so by showing me yours, you will get a lovely prize, which is a set of my stitch markers, which are my eye on your stitches stitch markers. There they are. There's a set of six, and I figured this one is a clear one, so it could be like the beginning. And they're all, they're called evil eyes. Eyes. Eyes on your stitches. So, I mean, the folklore for these evil eyes is that it's supposed to keep the evil away and bring you good luck. So, anyway. When I uh, tonight I'm going to open a thread that is asking you to sh tell me your favorite pins. Like I said, you can p paste a link to it, or you can just you know write what it is in such a way that we can go look at it for a set of stitch markers, random ram, random number generator for next week. And I don't care where you're from. I'll ship it wherever. So we just need to get a little more activity on the on the um, group, on the thread. So stumble. I have two things for the stumble. The first one is another kitchen hack thing. It is, waiting for it to load, 16 useful kitchen hacks you need in your life. It seems like the last couple of weeks we've had things that we need in our life. Okay, why isn't this loading? Anyway, there is a link. No, there's not a link to this one. There is a link to the the There is a link to the pattern by you, but I this this one is not loading. Oh, fooey. Give it a minute. So the other one, which is something that I was passing and I posted it in the show notes. It is a, it says, you're not reading this by accident. And it says, this is meant for you. I wish you love. I wish you joy. I wish you happiness. May you wake up every morning looking forward to your day and put your head down at every evening, tired and satisfied. Your life is too short to wonder what could have been. Instead, wonder what next. Be kind to the people around you and love them even when they make you mad. Tip your servers and help them have a better day. Be gracious to the elderly. Spread love. Peace. I thought that was wonderful. And my kitchen hacks, for some reason, is not open. Why do we have trouble with this? Last week there was trouble with this. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna try it on my phone. Okay, it's loading on my phone. Let me turn this back on. So, it's, it's 16 useful kitchen hacks you need in your life. 
It says, no matter whether you are just a trainee or a master chef, we can all use a little help in the kitchen, whether it's knowing which wine to pair with cheese, the secret to a perfectly boiled egg, or how to stop brown sugar from clumping. These 16 tricks of the trade will help you make help make your day in the kitchen day on kitchen duty that a little bit easier. Okay. It says use a mason jar or and salt lid for a coffee or sugar con can container. So and then you scroll up and you, oh, what, oh, what happened? Okay, likes. Okay. So you can take the salt box, cut the top of it when it's empty, put it in a mason jar and you have a sugar coffee or creamer. Cool. Okay, it has tips on which wine to serve with what cheese. It gives a, a listing of the different wines that you have different thing. How to, you, it says use a thumbtack for a perfect boiled egg. So you take the egg, you push a thumbtack in it, that it has a hole, you boil it, and the shell comes off easily. Perfectly boiled egg. You can freeze Cool Whip in cookie cutters to float in your beverages. Keep brown sugar from clumping with marshmallows. Tortillas on an oven rack make a great taco shell. You, okay, this, it, it gives you a diagram of a well-balanced cheese plate. The vehicle, which is the bread, the cheese, something crunchy and something sweet. It says an apple slicer can quickly cut up a potato. And it gives you step-by-step -step how to correctly cut a watermelon. And grill fish on a bed of lemons. I guess that keeps it from sticking and falling apart. You can freeze lemon slices in a cupcake pan for pitcher ice cubes. You and it gives a how you cut a mango. And the hack boiled water equals clear ice. And you can cook hash browns in a waffle maker. I think I've showed this before on a different one. Yummy, yummy. I haven't tried it yet, though. How to use... Okay, this has got a griff on using two bowls. If you can't see, there's a bowl inside a bowl, bowl flipped upside down, in a bigger bowl to help hold the ear of corn for cutting. And last but not least, I think we all know this. It's like one of the ways we get our frustrations out in the kitchen. How to core an ice iceberg lettuce instantly by smashing it, smashing it. <laughs> okay, that is it of for this week. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it. Please, if you haven't yet, go down there, over here, hit that red button and subscribe. It's free. You could go over on this side and there's some thumbs. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me, you know, if you are a spinner, 
what you think about, you know, rustic versus more um, top fiber and maybe what I'm doing wrong or whatever. Also, I didn't say anything about the YouTube. I have 195 subscribers this week. Awesome. I'm getting ready to try to figure out how to go on iTunes. That doesn't mean I will stop uploading to YouTube. I, I love YouTube. So, um, and uh, planning on having a YouTube comment prize for 200 members. So, and before I close, because I forgot to say it at the beginning, if you are new to this podcast, thank you so much for coming by. If you are a returning watcher, thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Your, your comments, your thumbs up, your joining the group and participating is all so, so appreciated. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you next week. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Bye, you guys.